come with me and you'll see a world of pure imagination. Because you'd need to have a really good imagination to enjoy the Willy's Chocolate event that happened recently in Glasgow. An event so bad that the police were called and children left traumatized. And this is allegedly not the first scam event that the creator has organized. He's been pretty notorious in his area for doing similar things. He's a politician, a doctor, a writer, a financial consultant, and owner of several different companies. We're gonna get into all this and more, so saddle up and hold on tight. Oompa Loompa Doompity Doo, I've got another video for you. Oompa Loompa Doompity D, if you subscribe, it'd make me happy. What was promised was a chocolate fantasy like never before. A place where chocolate dreams become reality. For only 35 pounds per person, which is 45 US dollars or 70 Australian, this experience could be yours. But what was actually delivered was a dirty, desolate warehouse. So there was a single jumping castle, some fold-out tables, chairs, and what seemed to be some kind of Oompa Loompa meth lab, and printed out AI pictures on the walls. This was a bleak affair. I've seen online be described as the fire festival for children. It honestly kind of makes Dashcon 2014 look like Luna Park. All right, maybe not quite, but at least Dashcon had the ball pit to go with the jumping castle. Instead of Willy Wonka, children were greeted by Willy McDuff. Instead of a chocolate fantasy, kids were rationed a single jelly bean and a quarter cup of lemonade. And instead of good times, children were absolutely traumatized by a character who has never appeared in any Willy Wonka material ever. What is that? It's the end of is the unknown. We're gonna get into them a little bit more later, but the general gist of them is that they are an evil chocolate maker who lives in the walls. I'm really glad they prioritized having this weird SCP creature over having enough jelly beans to go around for other kids. I guess they decided that terrifying them would be a much more memorable experience. The event accumulated with security people turning people away, parents demanding refunds, and the organizer Billy Cool desperately trying to defend himself. We'll no, get a video, I'm going to call the police. Thank you for your time. Right. Okay. Thank, thank you for right. your time. Do you think you're going to get rid of us? If you want to the queue, I won't give you people. Now, as we get into this, I do want to say that, you know, there's no hate towards any of the actors or the security involved. These are people just trying to do their jobs. They had no part in the organization of this event. A lot of the actors have come out and talked about their experiences, so we're going to have a look at those. And the security was hired by the venue. They have no affiliation to Billy Cool whatsoever. And the actors have come out and post about the fact that the security were really good and helpful people. And also no hate to any of the parents who went to this event. Apparently they were extremely nice and, and forgiving to the actors. And as we'll get into later, it's not really surprising at all that they fell for the con. Anything in the venue that seemingly looks half decent was actually rented from a company called EPH Collective. Credit to working this out goes to Dorian Electra on TikTok. That's where I first heard about this. Figured out exactly where they rented these props from. It's a company called EPH Creative based in the UK. I remembered it because I was looking for props for a music video and I remember these freaking mushrooms Right here, you can rent them. You can go on their website and you can see that they have a whole section dedicated to chocolate factory decor. And you may notice that to rent this stuff is not cheap, not in the slightest. The chocolate river is well over a thousand pounds. To pay off the river alone, they need to get 35 people through the door. I took a little skim through the website and I added up the stuff that I saw from the videos. Assuming that they didn't get some kind of special deal here, we're looking at like, you know, 9,000, 10,000 pounds, give or take. And this is for the decorations alone. That's about 19 and a half grand Australian or 12 and a half grand in US dollars. And then at 35 pounds for the entry, we're looking at needing to get 286 people through the door. This is only for the decorations. This does not even include VAT or transport according to the website. We also need to look into the fact that they need to pay actors, staff, hiring the venue, paying for the security, uh, tables and chairs, renting the jumping castle, paying for the website. It really adds up here. The venue was called Box Hub Warehouse and I looked it up on Venue Scanner and they reckon it goes for about 2,500 pounds per day. And they hired the venue for at minimum two days. So we're looking at 5,000 pounds there. This is not a cheap event considering we are already at 15,000 pounds. Again, this is only with decorations in the venue and we're kind of being more on the low side here. And considering they sold 850 tickets for this event, it's not looking like the most profitable scam. It's starting to make a little more sense that they could only afford to give each kid one jelly bean. Those jelly beans, they add up, man. I really don't think you get to call something a chocolate experience if there's not a single chocolate in the building. And this is a big bloody building. If they spent half the 
the decoration budget on chocolates, at least all the kids would have left happy. Hiring a venue that has a capacity of 2,000 people for a Willy Wonka experience is insane enough. Them thinking they were going to fill this up is absolutely nuts. Especially when they said that each person would spend, you know, 45 minutes to an hour inside. If they hired an area like a tenth of the size with half the decorations, then also charged half the price, there is no way we would be hearing about this today. So at this point, one might not think that this is a scam. It just seems like a really poorly organized event. So what was this supposed to be? Well, let's have a look at the website and maybe we'll start to piece some things together. So this is definitely not an official Willy Wonka event, although it was made definitely to capitalize on the success of the Wonka movie that came out a couple of months ago. But because this is not an official event, they couldn't associate it with Willy Wonka, which is why it's called Willy's Chocolate Experience. They don't use the word Wonka and they don't use the words Chocolate Factory in order to get around the legal issues surrounding that. However, when they first announced this event, it actually was called Willy Wonka The Chocolate Factory Experience. In this Facebook group called House of Illuminati Scam, House of Illuminati is the company that ran this event. Uh, this person says that they originally bought the tickets after seeing it being marketed as Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory Experience, and then a week later, they changed the name. So it seems a lot of people who went got conned in this way. They were misled by the initial marketing. Even now on the ticket page, they haven't updated the logo. It still says the Willy Wonka Chocolate Factory Experience. I'm no legal expert. I, I don't know dick or balls about it, but to me, it seems like they're very much opening themselves up to being sued here, if it says that on the ticket page. Now, going back to the website, the first thing you may notice here is that it seems like they don't know how trademarks work. Uh, according to the website, uh, the first thing you will experience when you enter the factory is the enchanting garden. And uh, you may notice that it doesn't exactly look as advertised. And to be honest, we should probably be thankful for that because because this looks terrifying. Now, obviously, this image was AI generated. You've probably already picked up on that. And the images get much worse as we go on. Your journey begins in an enchanted garden with giant sweets, vibrant blooms, mysterious looking sculptures, and magical surprises that add an extra layer of wonder to your chocolate experience. Navigate through peculiar but enchanting gardens collecting delicious beans of all colors, shapes, and sizes. Who knows? Perhaps you might be able to grow your very own enchanting garden. I don't know what the hell that means. Does the dude think that the kids are gonna be able to grow their jelly beans at home? I don't know what that means. Feels like maybe a human didn't write that. But let's carry on to the Imagination Lab trademarked, or as I like to call it, the Imagination Lab. In the Imagination Lab, prepare to be captivated by a visual spectacle, encounter mind-expanding projections, optical marvels, and exhibits that transport you into the realm of creativity. The space invites you on a surreal journey where boundaries between reality and fantasy harmoniously merge, resulting in an enchanting and visually striking encounter. Brace yourself for an adventure that will leave you spellbound. I'm so sorry to everybody for, you know, this year and other disappointment. Next, we have the Twilight Tunnel trademark. The little apostrophe before it makes me think that a cowboy said it. In the Twilight Tunnel, get ready for an exhilarating and immersive adventure. Journey through a dimly lit passage adorned with captivating projections, enigmatic sounds, and surprising turns that will immerse you in suspense and excitement. It's a heart-pounding experience that you've never experienced before. According to the picture, here's some things that you might say in the Twilight Tunnel. Uh, lighten, dim tight, dim silly, empretti, dodjection, vivu sounds, expected twits. Seems like the tunnel offers so many kinds of things. And finally, at the end here, we have captivating entertainment, otherwise known as enchurning entertainment, enchurning entertainment. This features stuff like cat cacating, live performances, kachi tons, exosurgery, lolly pops and a pasadite of sweet teats. So, you know, at this point, we can obviously tell that this event is more sus than the imposter from Among Us, specifically the red imposter from Among Us. That's the most sus imposter. What, what I'm trying to say is sus as hell. And as we look at these horrific faces and, uh, you know, the absolute gibberish underneath them, we can probably tell that, yeah, all this is AI generated. It's super weird that they didn't just regenerate these. This comes across as an obvious scam. But at this point, we should try and think about who this event is targeted towards. It's not targeted towards us, chronically online individuals. This is targeted towards children, parents, and grandparents. And it does bring up a 
really important topic about AI art. It is extremely new technology. And although, you know, we can tell the difference between what is art, like AI generated and what isn't, a lot of kids and grandparents aren't going to be able to discern the difference between what's AI generated and what isn't. You know, my grandma doesn't have Twitter. She doesn't have TikTok. She doesn't know what to look for here. And I understand that kids aren't the ones buying tickets, but they're the ones who are going to pitch it to their grandparents and their parents. Parents who are working full time and also looking after their kids don't have time to do research on whether or not the Willy Wonka event is real. Often they're just trying to find things to keep their kids entertained on the weekend. You know, they just see an ad for a Willy Wonka event and they jump on in. They got other shit to worry about. If my kid loves Willy Wonka, you better believe I am jumping on every single Willy Wonka event that I see. People don't deserve to be scammed, e even if you think they're stupid. The only people who think like that are scammers. Not to mention when they first advertised the event, it was being pitched as official and it didn't feature any of the AI art. I've been seeing a lot of people talk about, you know, the parents and the actors and the security in such a negative way online and it's like you know what are you doing these are, these are the victims here these are the victims you know it's a it is a funny story but i just think you know people take it too far a bit especially you know when there is a very obvious person to blame and it's not the parents it's not the security it's not the actors it's the organizer but we'll get to him we're gonna, we're gonna slow down at this point zero the actors have come forward and talked about their experiences uh this includes two of the willy wonkers and the oompa loompa from the from the famous picture this is paul connell michael archibald and kirsty patterson i hope i said their names right but you can listen to them on tiktok and they they talk about their experiences on the set. These are the TikToks that I watched. Uh, notably, there was also someone who came out and claims that they were the actor who played the unknown. And that, that simply wasn't true. That's kind of really cringe behavior. I don't know why they did that. But a lot of people believe that was true. It's not. The real person who's the unknown is, is a 16 year old. And they haven't come forward yet. And they probably don't want to. A lot of the actors don't want to attach themselves to this. So we're only going to talk about the ones who have come forward publicly. In Michael Archibald's TikTok, who was one of the actors who played Willy Wonka, they claimed that child labor was being used in the setup. And also, uh, this is the crazy thing. The contracts were signed in erasable ink they recognized the brand of pen they even brought it home he was using erasable ink pen and by the way so like i took this one from the um from the warehouse and yeah erasable ink for the contracts that is cooked that's a lesson folks always sign in your own pen at point of recording none of the actors have been paid they didn't really know what they were in for until the actual day of as the event begun all the actors kind of realized that Probably none of them were going to get paid. They saw the state that the event was in. They saw all the kids and they collectively decided that they were all going to stick around for the sake of the children to give them as good of a day as possible. So big shout out to the Oompa Loompa who somehow had to make giving a single jelly bean to kids a magical experience. That's not sarcasm, by the way. Like genuinely, that would have been a hard day, man. By that point, actually everyone walked off set, but then I felt bad for the kids. So all I tried to do was try and uplift everyone's spirits and just have a bit of fun with the kids. So there's a 13 page script that the actors were given to memorize overnight. And then the day of, uh, the script was completely thrown away. And they were just kind of told to improvise everything. We're gonna take a look at that now. And there's actually a couple minor clues that maybe this was also generated by AI. And maybe the reason that this was tossed is because it doesn't make any bloody sense. So because Willy Wonka is copyright, uh, the main character is called Willy McDuff. And of course, instead of Oompa Loompas, we have Wonky Doodles. Now out the gate here with the script, you may notice the first issue. It takes place on a brightly lit stage instead of a dirty warehouse. It also seemingly has stage directions for the audience. For example, here the audience chuckles, enjoying Macduff's self-depreciating humor. How did they know? How do they know they'd do that? Here it says some of them are visibly amused and some are leaning in, engaged with Macduff's charismatic presence. It's not really reading like a stage play currently. Here's a part where the stage transforms into a vibrant mystical garden of enchantment with oversized colorful flowers, twinkling lights, and mysterious pathways. I like this part where Wonky Doodle One trips over a pretend stone with sweets flying everywhere. Oops, it seems even the stones want a taste of our treats. I don't know if that's gonna translate well in the moment. Here in the script, it mentions something called giggle grass, which it, it that feels like, you know, that could be something else. But when you step on it, it triggers hidden speakers to play laughter sounds. That seems like a genuinely good idea. To my knowledge, they did not do that. If you see a butterfly, whisper your sweetest dream to it. They're our official secret keepers and dream carriers of the garden. What the heck does that mean? What are you doing? Remember, in the Garden of Enchantment, every moment is a chance for magic. 
Every corner hides a story, every bubble holds a dream. He opens his hand and the bubble gently pops, releasing a small twinkling light that ascends to the rafters, leaving the audience in awe. How the hell do you do that? What are you talking about here? They want, they want Willie McDuff to do real magic. He can't do that, man. He's not allowed, he can't do that. They gotta do that in post or some shit. So all that takes place, I guess, in this first area with the Chocolate River. De it definitely doesn't seem like as magical of an experience here. Uh, next, they go into the mysterious Twilight Tunnel. So this area is a path veiled in darkness, but it is also speckled with the light of a thousand Twilight Stars. In reality, this is what it actually looked like. It's like some shower curtains tied up, and then a couple of Ikea mirrors or something. Yeah, that, that's close enough. This honestly feels like the most achievable part to make. It just feels like you gotta make a dark tunnel and hang up some fairy lights. I don't know how they dropped the ball on this one. Finally, we get to the part with the unknown. Deep within the serpentine pathways of the Twilight Tunnel, the atmosphere grows tense as Willie McDuff gathers the audience in a semicircle, his face illuminated by the flickering light of his lantern, casting long shadows on the wall. The group's laughter and whispers fade as Willie begins to speak in a grave tone. My dear adventurer, we stand on the precipice of discovery most wondrous and perilous. For within these ancient walls lurks a tale not yet told of an evil chocolate maker known only as the Unknown. Um, so the Unknown is after the anti-graffiti gobstopper. Now what is the anti-graffiti gobstopper? Well, it's a marvel of confectionery science designed to aid, oh, not just any soul, but the tireless guardians of cleanliness, our beloved mums, and yes, dads too. But especially the mumps from the endless scourge of dirty socks strewn about by youthful adventurers. So somehow the gobstopper makes things clean. Anyway, then the unknown using some kind of magic freezes Willie Macduff. And the unknown's goal is to take the anti-graffiti gobstopper into an object of chaos. And then the unknown chooses someone to acquire the gobstopper. Now this sounds very familiar from the film, from the, the story, you know, Slugworth. Once that kid uh, asks all the kids to steal the gobstopper. Is it Slugworth? I think it is. Uh, but instead they've made it an evil creature who lives in the walls called the unknown because no one knows dick or balls about it. You all look as if you've seen a ghost or perhaps you're feeling a bit whitety. There's a bit where Willie McDuff gives people jelly beans and it gives the guests lines. Guest one trying this super flavored jelly bean. It's like dinner in a dessert. Astonishing. Guest two braving the booger bean. Oh wow, it's oddly gorgeous. How is this possible? How do they know what the audience is gonna say here? Does this make, did they have to, was the plan that they, what do they, what do you think? What do you think? Is this AI generated? Oh, I don't know. The whole thing accumulates with Willie versus the unknown. The anti-graffiti gobstopper showdown. So the unknown comes out and approaches Willie McDuff and he wants to turn tidiness into turmoil. Suddenly the room turns into a battlefield of lights and lasers. Willie uses a device resembling a futuristic remote, activating traps and illusions around the lab to thwart the unknown's advances. You think those parlor tricks will stop me? I've come to far to be foiled now. He retaliates with his own device, shooting beams of light towards Willy, who skillfully evades them using the lab's inventions as shields and counters. Willy activates a machine that releases a dazzling display of holographic images, momentarily disorientating the unknown. Seizing the opportunity, Will sets the anti-graffiti gobstopper into a contraction that amplifies its cleanup capabilities, sending a wave of sparkling cleanliness towards the unknown, neutralizing his device and rendering him harmless. And then the the unknown is gently swept up by a robotic vacuum, humorously ending the confrontation. How the heck were they gonna fit a guy in a vacuum cleaner? What the hell are they thinking there? The script had a moment where I was supposed to suck up the unknown with a giant uh, vacuum cleaner. And I asked about that and the people uh, running the event were like, we we don't know what to do with that. Just, just improvise. That. So yeah, either this guy has just unbridled creativity that cannot be fathomed in our material plane, or this was AI generated. Which, you know, it seems, it seems like it could be. And yet, going back to the art, that was also obviously AI generated. Do you think, in that case, they would just regenerate the art or fix it in Photoshop? It's extremely easy to do. Or with this script, again, it's clearly AI generated. Why did they not go over it and fix things? But it seems that the event organizer, Billy Cool, is not only extremely reliant on AI, 
he he he's incapable of doing anything himself, in my opinion, uh, be, because it doesn't end here. Now it says here the event was organized by a group called House of Illuminati. First of all, you should never trust the Illuminati. Okay, that's that's. Sign number one. Yeah, we can go on the House of Illuminati website and we can see that here there's also a lot of AI art. They offer mystique galas, avant-garde art installations, interactive, uh, techno-mythical shows, secret soirees, and enchanted retreats. Notice for every single one of these, they don't have an actual image as an example. In the news section, five of the news articles were published on the exact same day. And if you do a very simple reverse image search, uh, we can see that several of these pictures have been stolen. For example, this one is a thumbnail for a video from seven years ago. This one uses a low-res image from a sculpting video from six years ago. With this one, they're seemingly trying to imply that this was for the event. That they were crafting these mushrooms by hand. Again, we know now that they didn't. Also in the text here, we see that they were advertising chocolate fountains at the event. We know that didn't happen. This image with the slinkies coming from the ceiling. Again, this this was first uploaded in 2015 somewhere else. Clearly not his event. This is all very strange, but we are only really scratching the surface here. So let's check out some of his other ventures. Billy Cool is the author of 17 different books on Amazon. And all these books were independently published between July and August of 2023. He must be so talented to write so many books so fast. This is, this is an astounding rate. Stephen King, eat your heart out. Or maybe... Now this is just a little conspiracy theory of mine. Maybe they were all generated through AI, but who knows? Who knows? I'm not suggesting anything, okay? That's just a theory. A lot of these books are seemingly targeted at a certain audience. This book, which is called Selling Innocence, Rosie Black's Escape from Hell, is a fictional human trafficking story, uh, which came out around the same time as that film last year, Sound of Freedom. So, you know, think about that. It's also only 57 pages, which is, you know, really short for a book. Operation Inoculation, unveiling the A Conspiratorial Journey into Vaccination Truth's Deep State Conspiracy, is a bunch of seemingly random buzzwords, but I think they all very much speak for themselves about, you know, what that book's about. A bunch of these books have very strong themes regarding, you know, deep state conspiracy theories, scientists making discoveries which are squashed by the government, secret histories, that kind of thing. And reading the bio for some of these things is a mind-numbing experience. To me, it very obviously seems like it was AI-generated. It's It just seems like someone threw some buzzwords into ChatGPT and, and just tossed out what came out. So, event organizer and author. But who exactly is Billy Cool? And I don't know if I'm saying his last name right, okay? You know, I apologize. But thank you for commenting what it's actually pronounced like. So if we look at Billy Cool's Twitter, we can see that he is a doctor of metaphysical science. He's got a degree in metaphysical science. I have a metaphysical degree in science. He also apparently has a PhD, MDiv, and DD. If we look at his website, which was recently deleted, but because the internet is forever, it still kind of exists. We can have a little look at it. We can see he is a doctor of psychology, philosophy, theocentric psychology, and also has an MBA. So he's got a lot going on here. It's honestly impressive what he's collected. It takes a long time to get any of those degrees. So, you know, props to him there. This website was for a company called Empowerty, uh, which was recently dissolved in November of 2023. But the Facebook page is still up, so we can have a little look at it. So I don't, I don't really know what this company did, but I just love this post. Type yes if you have goals. Hey chat, make sure to type yes if you have goals. I'm typing yes. If your goals set you apart from the crowd, stay alone. They publish articles and stuff. Uh, three very important things to know when you make money online. It it's that kind of hustler mentality thing it seems to be. Because this person is a true hustler at heart. A couple of news articles have posted this following video, which really demonstrates his hustler ideology. The reason why I'm doing this quick twit video is because I've just learned this great product. Really exciting. It's a five ebook series to becoming financially free. Oh yes, it's, it's very exciting. And, and this five book series, right, is I'm revealing to you the rules of the rich. And these are the rules that some rich people really don't want you to, to know. And it's going to really show you how that you can become financially free. He's got another company here called Billy D. Savage. I kind of don't really know what this is. It seems to just be this YouTube channel. Here's a rhetorical question. If you have a spare million dollars in your bank account today, how will you spend it? Pay off all your bills and loans? Buy your dream car? Dream house? Uh, the website linked in the description for all the videos. It's gone. It's done. It's out of here. It seems like it was a very similar financial freedom hustler thing. Another company that he ran was Go and Bank Hub. This also has dissolved. This was a non-profit organization. They organized stuff like giving food to the homeless and that kind of thing. Obviously a great cause. 
uh, but it allegedly also was a little bit shady. Take the following with a grain of salt. Take everything in the video with a grain of salt, but especially this. I couldn't find any other people talking about this, but I do understand that, you know, it's a small community. I know him from his charity days running Go and Bank Hub. There he also attempted to scam people with a non-existent charity gala night at the Doubletree Hilton at £95 a head, with Gok Wan and various RuPaul Drag Race contestants doing cabaret. This event did not, not exist, and the agents were less than happy to find their clients' names and images used to advertise a fake event. Go and Bank seemed to disappear, but not before securing various grants for projects that didn't come to fruition. Running for and not winning a council seat, him parading around a doctor's certificate bought from a fake online university, and him buying and advertising the presence of a huge paramedic kit without any training required to use said kit, touting himself and the hub as some sort of emergency center. So yeah, in 2022, he ran for the local council election. Uh, this Facebook page is still up, you can still look at it. But also apparently, according to people, he actually didn't run for election and he was just trying to make it look like that he did. In 2015, he was even posting ads on Facebook for his home-based business revolution, which is absolutely not a scam. Hot tip, if you ever read something that has to clarify that it's not a scam, it probably is a scam. Him. Honestly, it's kind of hard to piece all the information together. At the end of the day, this is an individual who kind of works on a small local scale. As time goes on, we'll probably learn more and more about the Willy Wonka event. But with Billy Cool, even as I've been trying to make this video, he's been scrubbing his presence from the internet. Over time, a lot of this information would have been lost. So I thought it would be good to make a video about this. I'd love to know your thoughts about, you know, this whole situation. Personally, I think the whole Willy Wonka event thing was hilarious. I love the script so much. Uh, but I think as a character, this Billy Cool person does seem to be a bit problematic. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. New video next week.